five years ago that I would be reselling items full time and I would have not one, but multiple YouTube channels and that I would be going on sourcing road trips in sunny Florida to buy things to sell. I would have told you you were crazy, folks, but here we are. And uh, we just arrived. We're down here in the Tampa area. We're going to be spending the next four days going up and down the coast, all the way down to south is Venice Beach, maybe even Fort Myers if I get wild hair. And it kind of depends on what we find. But shoot, we're going to have a good time, I think. Peaches is here. We're going to be doing this together like we always do. I'm excited. I've never been in this area to do this sort of thing before. But I've been told by so many people, Rusty, you got to go down to Florida. You got to source down here. It's the best I've ever done. And I said to myself, I said, Rusty, you need to put this to the test. And so here we are, folks. And so that's what this video is about. We're going to be taking you to places. We're going to be looking at stuff. We'll come back to the Airbnb. We're going to show you what we found. Same as always. Talk about it a little bit. We're excited. And I hope you enjoy. Peaches is here. Uh, he's just getting things prepped for the next stop. We're just basically hitting about two places every 30 minutes, and we're doing that all day long for multiple days here. Uh, how do you feel like it's gone so far? It's been a blast, Rusty. Uh, getting some great finds at uh, some estate sales and uh, also some, uh, some uh, garage sales and uh, some thrift stores as well. Uh, got some great deals at an antique store yesterday. Nice. Well, we should definitely uh, show maybe our viewers some of that stuff here. Uh, maybe at the end of the day today, we can show some of the stuff we got yesterday and anything we pick up today. I think that's a great idea. Cousins, we are done with day one. We're back at the Airbnb. I got peaches back here. We're sorting through some of the stuff that we got, and shoot, it was a nice day, folks. I mean, of course, it's hot. It's in the upper 90s. We knew that, but let me just tell you, we had a great time, met a lot of very kind people, um, drove around quite a bit. Now, uh, for reference, again, we came into Tampa. We came down. We're staring, staying in Sarasota. Of course, we had to go down through Bradenton. All the way down, all the way south is Venice Beach area. And we hit probably, I don't know, Peaches, what'd you say? 12 places, maybe 14, 15 places today? That sounds about right. All right, you keep working now. But uh, anyhow, it was great and good night, folks. I'm just, oh, I'm just so relaxed now. It was so nice. Um, we got some work done. But uh, let me just tell you a, a few things. Uh, we got uh, some nice jewelry, a few pieces of fine jewelry, several costume pieces, which is sort of, uh, you know our bread and butter um we've got uh, a variety of tools and some other items but we're just having such a nice time it's great to get away uh this is one of the nice things about what we do uh our type of type of work uh, sure we work hard but sometimes we can get out and move around and that's really nice um of course working for yourself is good it's got its drawbacks but then again uh how how many people get to hang out with someone that they uh, are, are friends with they care about like uh, old peaches back here uh and uh i think i'm just going to kind of relax a little bit this afternoon uh we'll, of course we'll get into some of that but um you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a little time for myself. I don't know if that's a bad thing. I think that that's all right. Would you not agree? Uh, sometimes you just gotta take a little time for yourself. We're down here in sunny Florida. Uh, I want to seize the day. Uh, maybe we'll get out to the beach, you know, at some point. Uh, but we're gonna try to get some things photographed, listed up. Maybe we could even make some sales, as crazy as that sounds, before we even head back. Uh, but let's get in. We'll show you some stuff. And uh, shoot, I may take a quick nap. I don't know. <laughs> I 
right off the bat here, <clears throat> I want to show you a few things that we got today. Uh, we bought uh, several dozen uh, pieces of costume jewelry, some fine jewelry, everything that ranged from, uh, uh, you know, more common brands to more boutique brands. I've just pulled out a handful of things I want to show you and talk about today. First off, uh, this was the last place we went to today. We bought a couple of pairs of costume earrings. I'm going to show you these right here. They are like hearts and they look like grapes. Okay, they just look like plastic, all right? And then here's a couple other pair that look the same way, and they are also hearts. They have got little cherries on them. Isn't that cute? Um, but I had an, a, a, an inkling that maybe they were made out of Bakelite. I got back here, uh, pulled out my semi-chrome polish, tested those puppies, and it turns out they are Bakelite. I looked them up. I couldn't find any on eBay like that exactly there for sale, but earrings like this uh, usually sell in the $20 to $30 range per pair, uh, sometimes less, but you know, if you give it a little bit of time, I bought this in a lot of probably, shoot, peaches, or you, you think maybe 10 or 12 pairs of earrings and a few other things, all for $20. Yes. Okay, and so uh, that was really nice. So just with one pair of these earrings, I may make all my money back. That was exciting. Speaking of Bakelite, this was cool. Found this this morning at a little thrift store. Now I wanna be careful with it. It's a little bit delicate. It's on a chain here. Um, you can kind of see, it's kind of strange. This is very uh, thin chain. These are kind of like this red colored bead. Again, it looks just like plastic. Boring, maybe, to, to some people, but what these actually are are prayer beads. And once again, a little bit of semi-chrome on these suckers and a verify that they are uh, indeed Bakelite. So these are vintage. They are old. They were used to pray. I don't know who they were praying to with these beads but it doesn't matter because these are quite collectible. I sold a, a pair uh, that belonged to my sister um, about a week ago for $90, and they were, it looked exactly like this, except they were like a butterscotch kind of color, all right, more of like a yellowish. These are red, they're red, and even that deep, rich, what they would call like cherry amber or cherry bakelite, those sell for the most. All right, moving on. I got this a nice little cameo. This was one of somewhere around five cameos that I bought all today. Different places, some sterling, uh, some uh, just regular alloys, and then a couple of Goldfield puppies, which I'm excited about. But the thing about this one, I'll show you the back of it, and you can kind of see how that's uh, kind of coarse looking. Definitely, definitely some like dark, uh, almost looks like lines or a little pitting in there. And then on the front, a little bit pink, what you're looking at, folks, is angel skin coral. It is coral, comes from the ocean. Angel skin is just what they call the, the light or pink colors varieties. Um, and they can sell for very, very good money. I've talked about it before. I buy bracelets and, and necklaces and beads and stuff uh, regularly at, at uh, thrift stores because they just think that it's plastic. They don't know how to inspect it correctly. You should uh, definitely do your research and learn about things like coral and amber because those show up in jewelry a lot of times and they've been used in jewelry for, for many, many hundreds, thousands of years, all right? Okay, a couple more that I'm excited about. Um, we got this brooch. I'm gonna show you right here. It is of a peacock, all right? And all of those stones are uh, prong set. They are quite nice. It's a heavy piece. These are not plastic. It features uh, uh, about three different colors, green, a blue, like kind of like a darker um, blue, and then almost like a, I don't know, like a fuchsia color, kind of like a, not exactly purple, but kind of going that direction. Uh, on the back, uh, the, uh, the uh, brand says Panetta, P-A-N-E-T-T-A. And I was not terribly familiar with that uh, brand. I've come across them a couple times. I couldn't remember. I looked them up, but there are several uh, peacock ones, all roughly the same kind. Not this variety, but other ones that um, have sold in the $200 to $300 range. Believe it or not, it's costume jewelry, folks. Um, but this, based on weight... Uh, well, I was going to say that this would be worth more than gold based on weight, but it wouldn't. It's heavy. But the point is there are some costume pieces, earrings, bracelets, you know, rings, things that can sell for more than, than gold per gram based on certain um, rarities and makers. And so you should familiar, familiarize yourself with it. But Panetta is a great brand. I paid $3 for this piece, and I'm going to be able to sell it for probably $200 or more. 
All right, the last one I'm gonna show you here in this little segment is this, it's a little stick pin. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna move it up. You can definitely see the outline of it. What you aren't probably able to tell from there is that in the upper center of this large round section is a diamond, a genuine diamond, and down here is a blue sapphire. Okay, I don't know, yeah, well, you can probably see that if I get my, my little face here behind it, you can kind of see. Uh, yes. So uh, anyhow, this is great. Um, I paid up for this. Uh, I can't remember. I think I paid about $60 for this, but it is 14 karat solid gold. So I'm guaranteed to probably sell this for on the low end, $100, but probably closer to $150, maybe even up to closer to $199. Um, dependent. I, I haven't looked this particular one up yet to see how rare this design is, but stick pins can be made of solid gold, so you need to keep that in mind. I think we're going to get back to it here for a few, and then we'll jump back in the next segment, and maybe Peaches, if he can take a break. What do you think, son? I'll do my best. He'll do his best, folks. No promises here, but maybe he can get in. He found a couple of unique items. I definitely want you to see those. Hey cousins, it's what welcome back, uh, day two wrap up. I'm gonna share with you a few things that I picked up uh, earlier today. Don't mind Rusty's taking a nap. All right. First, we went to this outdoor, it wasn't outdoor, yes, it was outdoor. It was like at a warehouse uh, and it was, uh, n there's no AC. Now remember, this is summer down in Florida and the temperature was probably nine to five degrees outside with close to 100% humidity. Uh, we're out in that, uh, this aluminum warehouse picking through all kinds of tools and uh, sweat was running down our face, our back, down our legs. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta do that. That's part of the job. And uh, so picked up these sockets, these sockets, were priced at a dollar a piece. And uh, if you don't know anything about vintage sockets, certain brands do really well. Sockets that were made in America, uh, brands like Snap-on, Craftsman, Proto, uh, can do really well. Uh, a dollar, paid a dollar for these, and uh, I think, I think I can sell them for about $15, 15 to 20 a piece. Uh, so here we go, I got three of them. So I got this one right here. You can see, look how, how big these are. Right? And this one, you gotta take a look at this. This is a big man pajama, this one right here. It, uh, but it also came with the adapter in it. Now, the, if I can pop this little adapter out, the adapter itself can probably go for 15 bucks right there. So $3 in, gonna do 50 plus on that. Um, next, these, this, Fingers crossed that this is a great flip, a great deal. Uh, went to a thrift store, and in the case was a set of these pins. as a pin set. Uh, but if you, I don't know if y'all can see it, but I believe it's a Parker pin set, complete set. So we've got, there's a pencil, mechanical pencil. Uh, we've got just a regular ballpoint pen, okay? And on this one, fountain fountain tip okay now what's great about this set guys is the fountain tip i don't know if y'all can see that up close but if you can it says 18 karat gold so uh if we do if i did my research correctly i might be able to make a couple maybe 180 90 bucks on that and uh, I paid 15 for this set. Uh, so very excited about that. Also in that warehouse, uh, we picked up this, I guess it's like a part of a blowtorch. It's a, it's a vintage uh, torch, a welding for a welder or camping or uh, you know something. It's a copper uh, <coughs> attachment. It uh, paid $3 for it. Um, after doing some comps and do a little research, I don't know how much more I'm, I'm gonna get off that. I'd probably get six to nine dollars on it, maybe maybe 15, pushing 15 uh, if I'm lucky. Um, then picked up these <clears throat> these little pliers. Look how, can, look how cool these are. Did you see how small these are? Look, look how small that is. 
doing a little research on these. I think uh, these were part of a, um, paid less than a dollar a piece for each of these. Uh, probably can get 15, $20 or more on the on these. Uh, I can't remember what the, uh, the purpose, I think one of them is for an ignition, doing an ignition repair on a car. Um, and then I don't remember what the other one was for, but uh, really cool find, very excited about these. <clears throat> Uh, started the morning off at an estate sale <clears throat> and the, there were these uh, little hand blown glass swizzle sticks uh, there was a box of them there were there's one two three four five okay they were priced at 10 cents a piece so I paid 50 cents for these and I think that each one I could probably make, even if on the low end, I made a dollar on each one, okay? $5 off of 50, I know I can do more than a buck on, on each one. I could probably do uh, maybe five, five bucks on each one. That's, a, that's such a fun find. And they're very cool, look at them. Some got a little ball at the end. This one's got a butterfly, isn't that cute? Uh, then we got a Santa. A little Santa snowman, a little Christmas bell, turtle. I like turtles. And the last one is this swan. Is that a swan? No, that's a uh, a flamingo. I think. Isn't that cool? The detail on its tail is uh, very cool. Uh, and then lastly, uh, was at this uh, outdoor. Uh, well, no, it's just at an estate thrift store somewhere. Uh, got this bag. I kind of see if I can put them in my hand here. Get them all in. I got about twenty of these vintage arcade tokens. I paid twenty-five cents for about twenty vintage arcade tokens. Oh, drop one, excuse me. And I think that I could just put them up in a, as a lot. Maybe get fifteen twenty dollars out. Take turn twenty five dollars into twenty to twenty five cents. Excuse me, into twenty dollars. That's a great do. I I could do that every day. Next, we are at this uh, little thrift store, still in Florida, and uh, I picked this up. It was uh, in the back room. Uh, a lot of stuff wasn't priced. Uh, some of it was priced. And it was it was great deals this is the type of thrift store you hope to find where things are priced uh you know less than a dollar and uh, and it's good stuff so <clears throat> pick this up what is it peaches well i didn't know what it was at first but i unzipped it scoped it out i don't know if you could see this but it's like a like a, a jeweler's little uh kit little workshop here it's got, uh, and it's, it's brand new. It's got uh, a, a lot of the stuff still in plastic. I got uh, this little lanyard type thing, I guess you could, uh, I don't know where that goes, but it's got a little, it's got a loop. It's got a little tray. Look at that. It's got some tweezers, some tools. Got a little caliper measuring tool here. I don't know if you can see that. It's got, uh, it actually came with some little screwdrivers and uh, there's a little polishing cloth back there it's it's a great deal I paid a dollar for it and uh, here's the thing I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it I might just keep it for myself to use back at the warehouse or I might put it up on Facebook to sell uh, I just wanted to say that I actually found this first I looked in it and I was just like going real fast and I just sort of put it down and uh and i walked off and it was you did a good job of, of grabbing it i should have got it that was a, a mess up on my fault uh, on my part it was a good job peaches it was a good one thank you yeah then we were at this antique store and uh we were looking at the booths and uh, through all the different booths and there was uh in behind a glass case top shelf behind like three rows uh, of stuff deep on this top shelf i saw just this, poking through. Just a little, you know, a, a mixed drink, it's a cocktail shaker, uh, but something jumped out at me. It didn't look like a typical cocktail shaker. Uh, if you could see, there's some inscriptions right there, some wording. 
and uh, if we saw these little slots right here and uh and so i i asked to see it pulled it out um <clears throat> and we saw what this is called is a it's called dial a drink so you put in it's a, it's a huge shaker it's heavy heavy paid 40 dollars for it as you're mixing your drink up it's just kind of a fun thing you just uh, there's a little a little arrow here and you just spin it what are we going to make tonight let's make a whiskey sour you just spin it to whiskey sour and then it just read down it's got the menu of the drink right there does it have an old-fashioned on here it, it sure does let's see if we can find it we got oh you see it i, I think i do yeah where is it? <clears throat> look at that where is it it's right here oh yeah uh, there it is. Nice. Can make a nice old fashioned. And this thing could probably make three drinks. It is, it's so, it's, it is so beautiful. It's such a cool find. Again, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it exactly. How if much I'm did gonna, you pay for it? I paid $40 for it. And uh, I'm either going to take it home, use it at home, clean it up. Uh, you know, you can use soap. And this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, it's alpaca silver. I would recommend, if I may, just cleaning the inside of it and not on the outside. Leave that awesome old patina on the outside. Clean it up inside so that it's usable. And, and while I'm at it, if you don't mind, uh, alpaca, and it says it here on the bottom, alpaca. Right there, I don't know, yes, sirs and ma'ams, <clears throat> alpaca. And alpaca was uh, actually invented by the Chinese, as a matter of fact, early 1700s. And uh, it was uh, whatever the word is, like pop tang or something like that, that they used, and it meant uh, basically white copper was the translation because it is a copper alloy of zinc and nickel. So a lot of times jewelry will come in and it'll say alpaca silver, and it's not actually silver. The whole purpose of creating in the first place was to create an alloy that it was cl as close to the look of genuine silver as possible, but being made out of more common uh, uh, metals. And it's definitely heavy, like you said, too, to two to three pounds, honestly. Uh, it's really awesome. It's a beautiful piece. Um, I think he was absolutely right in getting it. Um, right now, there are people trying to sell ones like this in worse condition, tarnish-wise, and dented for seven to $800. He only paid $40 for it. It was in the back of like a glass case. I feel like it was a really, really good um, purchase. He's gonna make a really good, um, you know, he's gonna make a great return on it. If you find old bar- Also gonna make a great, Old it will make a great old fashioned. I wouldn't mind having one down here if I may be so bold. Um, they've also got some cool ones on here I've never heard of, like a Palm Beach, uh, the Alexander, Between the Sheets. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, Jen Rocky. I mean, cool. Orange Blossom. It's great. I really think it was a good, a good find. Um, carry on, sir. What, what he said. <laughs> Got nothing that you took care of that. Thank you, Rusty. Keep an eye out for old vintage barware. Uh, it can sell really well. Day two, cousins, and here's some things I got today I'm going to show you. Um, this is certainly not all of what I got, but I'm trying to get a variety of things so you can kind of get an idea of, of various things that maybe you can look for when you're out. <clears throat> Come on in here, Peaches. Cut up, a little close if you want. Um, get on in here. So uh, at that same uh, uh, outdoor thrift store where Peaches got his um, his uh, uh, sockets. Yes, thank you. Um, I found these, and I'm going to show them to you here. I don't know if you can see this real well, but it, uh, it these say Snap On, Snap On brand. <clears throat> of all the brands, folks, of old sockets you can find, and this is barring some of the boutique stuff from from really early on, really old. I look number one for Snap On, <clears throat> number two for Mac, M A C. Then there are some other old um, ones like Plum and Proto, uh, Vilcek, uh, and the list goes on. But <clears throat> when I can find Snap On brand uh, uh, sockets for very cheap, I buy them. So I paid a dollar a piece for each of these. I'm $2 in peaches. You can verify that, right? Yep. <clears throat> $2 in, and I've looked them up on eBay. They each sell for around $20. So $2, turn that into $40. Now, uh, you know, this was not the easiest searching I've ever done. Well, as he mentioned, I was out, it was hot. It was like, 
I mean, it was 94 degrees that day, and inside the warehouse with no heat, it was probably closer to 100 degrees. <clears throat> and I was sorting through a bunch of these. It was not fun, but you know, this is part of the job. I'm not complaining. Uh, well, I kind of am complaining, but not that much. I'm going to be happy to get the, uh, the the you know the return on that. We earlier in the day on these the first couple of days we have actually been going to uh, quote unquote estate sales, not like where uh, there's a big auctioneer or anything, but really just to people's homes, right? And so as a part of a lot, I end up buying a bunch of these. If you can see these, these are vintage lures. And I'm gonna pull just a couple up here that maybe are clearer to see. This one's called the Rattle Trap, Rattle Trap by Bill Lewis. Bill Lewis Lures, and you can see it's in it's an original case. That one's not as old, but then you got this one right here, which is a Dow, Dow, Dawagiak, something like that. I thought it was a, <clears throat> it's a Heden brand, H-E-D-D-O-N. And you've got the original box. And frankly, folks, if you're gonna get old lures, some of them can go for tons of money, but generally speaking, if you can find them in the original packaging, that's the best bet for making top dollar on them. Now, the problem is, if you don't know, you sometimes people kept the boxes and they end up putting a different lure in there and you don't necessarily know if it's the original lure or not but you can do some research for example on these old heathen ones there is a reference number on the side and that tells you the model or the type of lure you can search that on ebay or even on google and you can find the type be aware that certain ones actually come in different colors so like i could put in 385 l heathen sonic lure there may be different color options and that's fine but don't uh like if this is like a speckled gray and then you go in and you find like a, a like a bright perch color and that one's selling for 150 dollars that doesn't necessarily mean this one will sell for that much does that make sense so <clears throat> you need to do your research on it but i bought this in a lot of multiple things at that at that uh place i paid 40 dollars for everything and I'm going to probably get it at a minimum of $10 a piece for each of these. So my $40 is back to me with these. And then I bought a bunch of comic books. I bought um, some marbles and various other things. Speaking of marbles, Peaches, this is one of Peaches' favorite things is marbles. <clears throat> um, I bought this bag of marbles at the same place. Now, I'm to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not an authority on marbles, folks. Um... I have not lost my marbles, and even if I did, I've got several to replace them here. Um, that was a dad. That was kind of a dad joke there, peaches. Um, what we got here is uh, a bunch of like mid-level. Uh, they are vintage marbles, but they're not terribly old. They're probably I don't know, 1970s, possibly 1960s. <clears throat> Some of these are older than others. What I'm hoping is that some of these really soft, like lemon color ones, will be uh, made out of uranium glass. You may or may not be aware that certain types of glassware marbles were made with what they call Vaseline or uranium glass. It fluoresces, it gets really bright in color under fluorescent light. And silly me, I forgot my fluorescent flashlight on this trip, so I could not test them right now. So I cannot verify that any of them are. But last week, our most recent video, if you haven't seen it, I bought five jars of marbles. One jar was entirely uranium glass, probably 100 marbles in there. <clears throat> I paid $20 a piece for each of those uh, jars. So it's $100 in. I'm probably going to get at least $200 just from the jar of uranium marbles. And that's selling them as a lot. If I sold them in like fives or tens, I could make even more than that. Okay, here's something. This was actually the very first thing I bought on this trip at a thrift store. I didn't know if this was a bugle. I didn't know if this was some sort of a horn. Clearly, it's made to be blown. All right, here. And you got this, like, mouthpiece. You can actually remove it, and you can see this spot here. I didn't know if it was missing a piece or not. It's actually not making noise right now. Peaches seems to think he is an astrophysicist, in case you didn't know. He got his doctorate in astrophysics. He, he studied string theory primarily, but, you know, there's transfer, transferable skills and knowledge base there. But he seems to think I need to bend this in a little bit more, and maybe I'll get some sound out of it. We'll try it. But this was listed for $4.99 at the thrift store, but it was 50% off day, if you can believe it. And so I got this for $2.50. <clears throat> I have not necessarily verified if this is an original one or not, but... 
Peach has helped me uh, learn through some research that this was, uh, they call it like a maritime foghorn. Fog a foghorn, folks. And let me just, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna try to bend it in a little bit. I'm gonna give it a quick blow. And we're just gonna see if anything comes out. Are you willing to do this I'm experiment ready. with me? It's possible that it is either so high sonically or low that the human ears cannot hear it, or it's not working. And my guess is it's not working. not working. We'll probably need a little bit of work on this, and that's fine, but it might be a repro, but it might be an older one. If it's, it has some earmarks that it might be newer because it has a very new chain, although that could have been put on more recently. But the tarnish is so heavy, it kind of makes me think that it's older because a newer one you would think would be brighter. Brass does not tarnish all that much, not like car, copper. And this is tarnishing pretty heavily like copper would. I'm not so sure, but the point is two and a half dollars. I'm gonna sell this for $20 or more. I'm gonna get a good return. <clears throat> Last two things. I'm real excited about this. Peach's nose, and he does it too, uh, old photographs and old postcards are both fascinating folks, honestly, and also can bring really great returns. This one right here is a what they call an RPPC, a real picture postcard. See, it is a postcard. This is from the early 1900s, and this is of an old basketball team. I'm going to put this up real close here, and it's awesome. Isn't that not cool? These old, these old guys here, um, these youngins, Young Bloods out there doing their basketball stuff. On the back, uh, it does not have postage, but it does have in pencil, basketball team of Ralphs. This was Ralph, all right? Now, which one of these old bruisers is Ralph? Man, you're, you know, who's to say? Your guess is as good as mine, but one of them told the basketball, and the other guys are just sort of holding on to each other's arms and just lounging there because, you know what? They're confident in their skills, and I'm, uh, you know, I bet it was really interesting to see that back in the day. Old sports-related postcards can sell for great money. Just a month ago, I bought a couple of real picture postcards in Wilmington when I was on a vacation. I put it on auction. One of them sold for $133. This one only, I actually paid up for this. This one cost me, uh, well, it says $10, but it was half off. So it cost me $5. I wouldn't be surprised if this could bring $30, $40 postcards. People just paper. But this is a photograph and it might be the only one of its kind. People collect this old sports memorabilia. That's awesome. Last up here, I came across this really nice necklace. It's got a set of earrings with it, um, and I will just briefly show you the earrings here, <clears throat> if I can pull them out, shoot. Right here, nothing special, kind of dangly gold numbers here, but uh, the thing here is, this is a costume piece, I'm gonna pull it up here. We sell a ton of jewelry, folks, a ton of it. Um, it's this piece right here, and you see it's quite beautiful. It's nice and red. Red rhinestones, clear rhinestones as well, and then some dangly tassel business at the bottom here. And on the back, it is it's set up to be also a pen as well, and you have a brand name, and it's H-O-B-E. That is not Hobe, it's not Hobie, it's Hobe, I believe. Now, I don't know if that's French. Uh, I don't know if it's that's French. It, perhaps it's French. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. You'll tell me, cousins, if that's correct. But Hobe is a fairly boutique, nice brand of costume jewelry. It's a beautiful piece, and I have earrings as well. <clears throat> I paid up. I paid, uh, uh, I, was, I think it was $50, $50, something like that, for this piece. I paid up because I know that brand has sold well for us in the past. If you look online, Hobe... There are bracelets and even like, uh, not bracelets, and necklaces, well, bracelet sale, but necklaces, earrings, sets can sometimes sell into the multiple hundreds. And I was pretty confident I could probably get over $100 for this, if not two to $300. Now, I don't always buy, uh, buy costume jewelry at that price. I want you to know, sometimes I will pay up for sterling sometimes and for gold, but um, this is just such an attractive piece. I was very happy to find it. Um, Anything to add on that, Peaches? No, it was, uh, it was a beautiful thing. It was a very nice piece. There were some piece. other really nice old Czech glass, beautiful um, necklaces. I probably could have, uh, you know, bought, but I, it was a little bit of a risk because it was, you know, $80 to $100. I didn't want to take the risk on that. We're finding lots of great stuff here, folks. I'm real happy about it. Um, we're going to get some good rest tonight. Uh, maybe we'll do an old-fashioned if we're feeling, you know, like it. But we'll get back out tomorrow, and we'll let you see what we found.
still not working. Hey cousins, just had to show you this uh, lamp that we saw at a, an estate sale that, or, I'm sorry, excuse me, an antique store that we just had to pass up, uh, unfortunately, because, uh, well, it's, it's large and we couldn't take it home with us on the plane. Um, and we were also concerned that it would damage in shipping, but this beautiful vintage Art Nouveau lamp, uh, the little card says, very nice presentation of woman with water jug. Now it does say as found, as you'll see in a picture, there's a crack at the base, but this is a beautiful bronze uh, statue made in France. They're asking $375 for it, but, uh, you know, you could have, if we bought that, if and if we were able to buy that to take it home with us without uh, it getting damaged, or if we were able to buy this locally, totally would have taken that offer because we could probably sell that for two to $3,000. All right, folks, day three at the end here. Uh, been doing some work. We got done. We saw uh, several different places. It's a Sunday, so sadly, actually, it was difficult because a lot of places were closed today. Um, and uh, but we did our best. We still like you know researched went to this place and that. Uh, had a couple misfires, but you know what? That's all part of it. Uh, we still got a, a handful of decent stuff. Um, I got a bunch of uh, different types of uh, pages. All right. All right, so do you fall? I'm good, yeah. All right, uh, Thank let, you. let me know if you need anything. All right. <laughs> He's kind of a klutz sometimes, I don't know. Uh, anyways, I got a bunch of these um, different types of, uh, well, they're comic books. Uh, and, I, you know, I have a little junior cousin that really likes Spider-Man and stuff. And so I got a handful of those. I got some Venom ones. And um, I got a lot of uh, probably, let's call it 12 comic books and a few other things. I paid $40 for everything. But this comic book is selling for about $20 online. This one is around $14. And the rest of these are in the sort of the $10 range. And so I'm going to make all my money back and get my profit off of just the comic books, which is nice. Um, you may or may not be aware that uh, in the comic book world, um, things like really old Superman comics, um, Spider-Man as a, as a particular superhero sells very well in action figures and also comics. And so uh, I have a junior cousin that really likes those and sometimes look those for those for him. But keep a lookout for those. Obviously, do your research. A lot of the ones that were, you know, came out in like the late 1970s and in the 1980s were produced pretty heavily and much like sports cards, most of them carry very little values because so many of them were made. But if you can get really good vintage ones or if they're particular ones that feature a particular character, it's the first time that that character is brought into the comic book world, for example, the first exposure of that character, those particular issues tend to draw much higher values. Um, moving on, I got this little uh, thing here, and I'm, I'm still not exactly sure, folks, if this is like, what exactly this is. It's small. It might be, uh, it may be for ink, but I don't think it is. It might be for a small candle or something, but it is glass. And the, the thing that, the reason I bought this, folks, was it was $2, but if you circle around on this, and anytime you're seeing something on uh, something like glass or uh, silverware or especially jewelry, obviously you look, but you look around the rim or around the handles of things and you might see a stamp. In this particular case, it has a stamp here that uh, it says Frank Whiten, Whiting, all right, uh, patent pending sterling. So this is sterling silver, okay, this is silver around here, and I don't know what this was for exactly, I'll have to do some research. But I knew that for $3, the silver with this, it would sell. And so that's why I bought it. Kind of moving on, speaking of sterling silver, this was a really cool piece. And uh, I, he, he, wouldn't, he probably doesn't want me to say this, but much like earlier with the shaker where uh, he found it, uh, uh, or not the shaker, what was it that I said earlier that, he, that I saw first? Oh, it was all the, uh, the little satchel that had all the uh, gemstone stuff. I saw it first, I wasn't paying attention, I was moving fast, he got it. Uh, this was one of those where he actually saw it, 
didn't pay attention. I came around and I found it and I got it. And it's this, um, it's just a butter knife, essentially. Nothing super fancy, although the handle is quite ornate. It's very floral, heavily carved, and this is quite heavy for, uh, for a knife like this. But the entire handle is sterling silver, and if you look very closely on it, which I did, uh, you look right here and you can see it's, it has a stamp. It says Sterling. It has a stamp. It says Sterling here. People collect these just for what they are, uh, just for the look of it. Uh, they'll clean them up. You can make this look very beautiful. Um, other people will buy these individually in order to match sets where they're missing something. And then uh, also there are people who would get this, for example, they would just cut the uh, stainless steel portion of the blade off entirely, and then they would melt the handle down for sterling silver. So at the very least, I'll be able to get roughly 75% of the gram weight off of this, uh, of the handle for sterling silver. And it's quite heavy. I mean, this is probably 30 or 40 grams so I'm looking at 25 to probably, yeah, 25 to 30 dollars depending on the gram weight. If I was just selling it for scrap, and I paid one dollar for it, so that was quite quite a good little pickup <clears throat> uh, with a low cost, of course. I got these little these little glasses. You can see these are vintage spectacles. Okay, one's more obviously uh, uh, like has um, lenses like sunglasses, and the others are more like reading glasses spectacles. Um, they have this sort of John Lennon look, the, the round glasses, but um, this style was quite popular uh, very early on in the 1800s and even before that. Um, and they have these kind of like very wiry looking kind of parts that go over the ear here. And uh, these sell really well. Now these particular ones specifically won't sell as well because they're small. You may or not be able to tell like these are quite small they're even they're even thinner than than my eyes almost and if i were to try to put these on uh, that might be funny to see you can see that they don't even go all the way back these are for children okay so they will still sell well collectors collect these they won't bring the values that ones for adults would bring um even better yet if these were adult size and they had gold filling metal on them even better or the sort of the tortoise shell uh, look. Those have sold well for us as well. So keep a look for these. People in thrift stores or antique stores that know what they are, sometimes will have them priced 20, 30, $40. That's a no-go. You don't wanna spend more than five to $8 on these when you see them if you wanna sell them and make money. For adult ones, especially if they're gold-filled, I can regularly get $30 a piece for them. For smaller ones, maybe not quite as much. I probably will sell these as a lot because they're roughly the same size. They're both children's and you've got a variety, regular reading glasses and then also the ones with darker lenses. And then still on glasses, I'm just gonna show you these because I don't know if it's collectors, I don't know if people are wanting to wear these or what, but these are really coming back in style. It's these horn rim type glasses, these vintage glasses. And you can see they have these like kind of, um, uh, well, they're, they're uh, soldered on, these little pieces here on the corners. Uh, you can probably see that right there, these little, it's like floral, kind of this pattern. The particular brand here, if you look on the side, is Tura, T-U-R-A. And I look these up, some of these are selling for hundreds of dollars, folks, I'm not kidding you. These are vintage, probably 1950s, 1960s uh, glasses, sunglasses. And luckily, the lenses are quite clean. I can rub off some oils and some, some smears and stuff, of course, but there are no cracks or anything in them. They're quite nice. They're this sort of, I don't know, rose pink type color, but they could sell, I think, for probably around $100, maybe more, and I paid $1 at a Goodwill for these. That's the cool thing about uh, Goodwills and some of these thrift stores is you can get glasses a lot of times for a dollar or sometimes less. Same things with like neckties, ball caps. We've got other videos that list of like a handful of items that you can regularly can buy for $2 or less that can you can flip for good money. And then finally, and this is just sort of like I'm pulling on, tugging on the old heartstrings here. I got a, a, a baseball card of Lou Brock a St. Louis Cardinal, and you know, I'm from Southwest Missouri. I hail from the Ozarks, believe it or not. I live in North Carolina and the Appalachians now, but I'm an Ozarkian. And, uh, you know, of course, I'm not related to Old Lou, nor do I know anyone with that last name. 
However, um, you know, I, I do enjoy um, the Cardinals. That was my team growing up, um, you know, and uh, I, I do love baseball. It's a really fun sport. Unfortunately, <laughs> the old cards are having their worst season since World War I this year. I'm sad to say, but I'm still a fan of theirs. You're not going to lose me as a fan. Uh, so anyhow, uh, really cool uh, to find out I paid $4 for it. I wasn't buying that to resell. That was really for myself. However, um, there are certain ball cards. It's highly collectible. I don't have to tell you that, that sports cards are highly collectible. This is not a highly collectible one. You could find this for probably even less than $4, frankly, on eBay or something. But that was just something I wanted to show because I was happy to get it. Sometimes you get things for yourself because it's fun. And after, after this long trip, after buying all this stuff, and I can show you right now after three days this entire bag, it's probably weighs six or seven pounds is entirely full of jewelry that I bought. I handpicked just in these three days. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this, this bag is somewhere in the $1,500 to $2,000 range in profit, uh, or not profit, in, in, in earnings uh, after I sell it. Um, and I'll have to calculate to get the, the profit, but this has been such a fun trip. I'm gonna give old Peaches a chance here to show you a few more things he got. Maybe you can learn something. All right, Peaches is back with you again. Uh, wanted to do a little recap of what I picked up on day three. Uh, earlier, uh, Rust and I were at a, uh, uh, it was like a, a, a picker's paradise, if you will, a nice little thrift store. And uh, I came across some really neat uh, old black and white photos. And uh, I wanted to just to share some with you uh, what I bought because I think they're really neat and wanted to talk about why I bought them. Um, so first off, um, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven photos and I spent less than $30 on those photos. Um, and you know, each one I, I know I'm gonna be able to make money on. Some of them, they might sit in the store for a little bit. Uh, others uh, might sell pretty quick. Um, but uh, anyway, let's let's take a look. I got this uh, this old black and white photo, as I said. It is of a, uh, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but it's of a, a little homestead, a farm, farm in action. Yeah, somebody just popped out the, the camera, the old camera set it up on that wooden tripod and, and took a photo of the family farm while in progress. And I, if you all can see that close enough, uh, there's some really neat things happening in the scene. You got some livestock, a couple of wagons, a couple of carts. Now, if you look right, let's see if I can show with my finger, kind of right where my finger is, right there, there's a, you see that cart there? There's, it looks like a black, like a dark pole that's coming up right out where the driver of that cart would sit. And I was studying that. Now you all tell me what you think, but uh, part of me thinks that's a, a, for a lantern maybe, like a lamp post. Uh, I don't know. It almost looks like a stove pipe of some sort, um, but uh, it's really neat. There's, uh, like I said, a couple of wagons. We've got, uh, uh, you know, the fencing is really neat. You see those barn structures, very cool scene. It's just fun to study and, uh, and just imagine what life would have been like at that time. Uh, anyways, pick that up, $2.99, uh, $3, probably, you know, I might, we could, could get 20, 30, 40 bucks out of that. So who knows? Um, next, if you've spent any time watching any of our videos, you would have heard Rusty talk about what to look for in old photos. Uh, you'll hear him say, uh, if you say photos of uh, old uh, war. Well, hey, what's up there? Hey, can I get you anything? Uh, features maybe an old fashioned. Oh, that sounds terrific. All right. Thank you. Uh, you. You would have heard Rusty talk about pictures of soldiers in uniform. Um, could be portraits or it could be in action. And uh, it seems to be that the uh, uh, photos of soldiers with their wep <clears throat> excuse me, with their weaponry uh, tend to go for a lot more. Anywho, uh, I tend to go for a lot more. So uh, I found a few like that. I've got uh, this. This is a little 
I don't, I don't know, what is that? Like a three by four, two by two by four, two by three, uh, just a little wallet size picture, but you see one, two, a couple of men here, one, two, three, four, five gentlemen out here. That's sounding real good, Rusty. I'm getting it. Five gentlemen. Uh, this is probably World War II, and they're taking a knee and they're holding some pretty large ammunition, like some pretty large shells there. Probably some anti aircraft or anti air. Uh, craft uh, shells. I don't. I don't know much about the size of those shells, but those are pretty significant. Uh, you, as you can see, they're on their they're on their knees, and that uh, that shell case, and it, it goes all the way up. Some of them all the way up to the top of their head. There. That's uh, those are pretty large. Anyway, that's that's a really neat photo. Paid a uh, dollar ninety nine on that. And uh, again, not sure exactly what, where we'll price that, but definitely going to get more than two dollars. So that could get fifteen for that. Uh, who knows even more <clears throat> okay on the same uh, same line of uh, men soldiers in uniform this is not a this is not a, a portrait in in studio but this is uh, in a field it looks like a father uh, home uh, either home from tour uh, on a break or he's about to ship out and he's holding his uh, his child uh, before he goes off to war I'm guessing and uh, it is, it's just a unique photo. They're out in the field. See that? Very fascinating. Look how crisp his, his, uh, his boots are. And you know what? I think that could be, this is World War I. Uh, just looking at the boots and the uniform. Uh, my guess is, is World War I. Uh, I'm not sure if that's English or not. Um, but uh, if you rec if any of you out there recognize that uniform, you can tell me which uh, country that's from. That would be uh, that would be really helpful. Uh, just a really neat photo there. Uh, and if you look real close, you see behind him against that fence post, there's something leaning down there, and that could be. I'm wondering if it's part of his uh, his uniform or is it some weaponry? I'm not sure. But uh, very unique, very fun find. Paid. Uh, two dollars for it again gonna get way more than two dollars for that um, okay <clears throat> also in here now this one jumped out at me because it looked like uh, some of them were former soldiers maybe this is coming home from after World War II um, there is a, is a young group of there's a group of young men they're outside sitting on the curb and they're tinkering with something it's just a cool shot uh, you got, let me move my fingers, they're in the way. Um, you see, there, my guess, if I was to tell a story behind this, put a caption on it, I would show that the, the gentleman in the middle with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, I would say that's the oldest brother. Maybe he's home, he, he served in World War II, and then we got the gentleman uh, with the hat on. Um, you know, maybe he didn't serve in World War II. Maybe that's his big, bro, his big brother's hat and his boots. And he's just proud to wear them, or maybe he did serve in World War II, and those are he just brought those home. He was wearing them, and uh, and maybe the the young man and the uh, the other young man with the shirt off that's kind of back to the camera. Maybe he's the younger brother, and he's just happy to have his big brother's home and um, safe and sound. And they're out there. It looks like they're tinker maybe with some radio equipment, shortwave radio or something. I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure really, uh, but it's just the. Fun photo to kind of imagine what the heck's going on in there. And um, again, this paid, uh, we paid $3.99 for this. And I do believe it'll make a pretty nice uh, return on that because it is a unique photo. Uh, and it's a larger size photo. Uh, as you can see, it's, what do you think that it's probably like a, a four by six, maybe five by seven. And it's a nice detail too. It looks like a little apartment complex in the background. I don't know, are those palm trees back there? No, those aren't palm trees. Anyway, very interesting photo. Definitely will catch, catch the eye of a collector. Um, all right, so another thing that Rusty has shared about when collecting and looking for uh, old black and white photographs and even real picture postcards is uh, uh, scenes of maybe people hunting, fishing, um, if they've got some some animals or if they're guys you know catching fish, uh, any of sort of those kinds of action shots, those tend to go really well too. Um, this is a photo that I this is a uh, it's a little 
uh, you know, a four by three by five, maybe two by five. I'm not sure. Uh, here's a young man. They're out on out at sea, and he's sit hanging out by the side of the boat. He just cut this nice. Look at that big, the size of that fish that he caught. He's in his little swim trunks, long sleeve shirt. He's hanging onto that catch. What, what, it's just a such a cool little photo. Somebody's gonna want that. Uh, very cool to look at. I'm not sure. Is that like a what kind of fish? What is that? For the size of that uh, hook that's holding on, that could be a shark. I'd have to study the the. I'm thinking that could be a shark. What do y'all think? Anyway. Um, now on the same, okay, in the same theme as, uh, as fishing, uh, saw this one, oh, I'm sorry. This one right here paid $2 for it. And uh, I think I'll make, just like all the others, gonna make more than $2 on that. Now this one, this is uh, it's a fishing fo photo and I just had the hardest time passing it up. I had to get it. Uh, I did pay more for it, paid $15 for it. Now I'm gonna read the tag, okay? Uh, actually, the back of it. It says, oh, there's a measurement that was cut off. Um, something, so many feet, five inches, 112 pounds, February 1958, Mexico. And it is a picture of some gentlemen that were out deep sea hunt, uh, fishing. And, uh, and they caught a 112 pound swordfish. Look at that. What a cool photo. Paid $15 for it, um, but it is such a, it is such a cool find. Uh, I, had, I had to do it and I do believe that uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna get our money back and then some on that. Um, well, here Next. you go. Oh, wow. That smells delicious. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> delicious. I got one more, Rusty. All right. All right. Here we go. Couple boy, couple men hanging out at a peaceful lake side. Looks like they're just sitting uh, on, the, on a canoe on the dock. Got their sweaters on. Maybe it's kind of a brisk morning. Maybe I, I think I can see some some fog back there. You know, on the on the lake back there. Little nice little mountains in the background. And the boathouse back there. So picturesque, isn't it? Yeah. It's, sorry for the glare. It's in its in the sleeve, and I couldn't take it out. But uh, really neat photo. Now this is a real picture postcard, black and white. Uh, on the back it says. Excuse me. When you, I mean, I'm gonna to try to read this uh, this handwriting here. It says, when you, oh shoot, I had it earlier. Uh, when you, basically saying, when you haven't anything else to think, to look at, look at this, ha ha. What a funny little message. Anyway, paid, uh, paid $2 for that folks. And again, gonna make some good money on that. Um, <clears throat> Lastly, I just want to say that uh, we went to this little uh, uh, Pickers place, a little thrift store, uh, and we were walking around. I didn't really find anything. Last minute, I saw this on the shelf, went over, picked it up, thought it was really interesting looking. If you don't know what it is, it is a crystal... Uh, decanter like a whiskey liquor it's a decan stopper. It's a decanter, decanter stopper. stopper thank you little lid that goes in the top can't do it without rusty um it's a, it's a hand-blown glass you can tell by a, a couple waves there's a little nub on the top there and you can see the air bubble in the middle up close uh Went up to him, asked him how much he wanted. It's not marked. Asked him how much he wanted for it. He said, you can have it. Said, thank you, sir. I took it. Now, here's the problem. It's broken. See that? 
So I'm, I just think it's a cool piece. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it, uh, how I'm gonna price it. Haven't really shopped comps on that. Haven't seen many like that. Uh, it's, it is a cool little decoration piece. I don't know if anybody would be able to use it um, to the, its fullest potential, but um, it, it is a cool little piece. Uh, I'm gonna, I, will, I do believe I'll be able to turn zero into something more uh, and, uh, and make a nice little profit on that. So uh, anyway, folks, that's going to be it for uh, uh, from Peaches Day 3. Folks, thank you, Florida. Thank you, Sarasota, Bradenton, Venice Beach, Tampa, small business owners. Thank you for all of your uh, uh, kind words. We spoke with many people that were very helpful. And thank you for uh, selling us some nice items that we can resell and help provide for ours and those that we take care of. Uh, it's been a pleasant trip and visit. Uh, I, I had a good time. Did you, Peaches? It was a blast. It was. And I hope to do it again soon, folks. Uh, more on this large jewelry haul and other items in the next video. Thank you for being a part of this community. Uh, all you relatives that we have out there, uh, take care. Thanks for watching, cousins. See you guys. Yeah, it's awesome.